Today I will discuss the Minyani Pesach. We'll deal with the mitzvah of Haseba. You taping it on that? You want me to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see how it comes out. We're going to deal with the mitzvah of reclining and how it relates to the different mitzvahs of the night. So uh, the Gemara tells us in Sachem and Afkuches, the Gemara tells us, Matzah Sarech Haseba. The eating of matzah requires haseba, requires reclining. Marar ain sara haseba. The eating of the mara does not require haseba. And the symbol of is matzah represents freedom, so we recline like a free person. And marar, which represents the slavery, we don't recline. Yai, what about wine? So that's the discussion in the name of Rav Nachman that the two different people said the name of Rav Nachman um, whether you need Haseba or not. So, the, so some say there was a discussion in the Gemara the first two cups or the last two cups so we'll come back to wine in a minute. So let's discuss um, Matzah for a minute. So the Gemara says Matzah Sarah Haseba. So the question is what happens if you don't have Haseba? What happens if you don't recline? So, Tosfus over here in Sachem, he raises the question, and he is Mesupik. Shekfar Amru, he goes through the Gemara over there. But he goes, he talks about the four cups needing Haseba, and then he writes, the Sarach Ian. Im shachach v'lo hesev. Let's say you forgot and did not recline. Im yagzur v'yishta. So his mesupik is in doubt on whether um, if you eat the matzah, I and mean, we'll see wine also, but if you eat the matzah, whether you have to go back or not. So, so the doubt of Tosus seems to be the machlokas, Rambam, and the rush. The rush seems to say that if you forgot to recline when you're eating the matzah, it's a no-go, even with the evidence, one would have to go back and eat another Kezayah Samatza. And the Rambam, he doesn't write it explicitly, but the way the people learn the Rambam, the Rambam seems to say, you don't have to go back. Everyone agrees you have to recline. The question is if you ate matzah without reclining. So Tosis is in doubt. It seems to be a machlok, is Rambam and Tosis, whether Rambam and the Rush on whether you have to go back or not. What's in the Kudus Hamachokis? What's the issue? Why you have to go back and you don't have to go back? So the Briskarav explains, the issue seems to be is, what is the nature of the Din of Aseba? What is the reason of, of the Din of Aseba? Is, is Aseba an independent mitzvah? Like you have a mitzvah of Matzah, Marar, you have a mitzvah of Haseba. Is Haseba an independent mitzvah of the night? Well, no. It's not an independent mitzvah. It's part of the mitzvah of Matzah. But not only is the Torah concerned, or the rabbis concerned, that you have to eat a certain amount of Matzah, but they're also concerned in the manner you eat the Matzah. So is, so is Haseba an independent mitzvah of Matzah? Or part and parcel of the mitzvah of matzah is you have to show your freedom not only by eating it, but by requiring it as well. So, that's, so if you hold it an independent mitzvah, so if I ate the matzah and didn't recline, so I still got my mitzvah of matzah. But if I say it's part and parcel of the mitzvah of matzah, so then I don't get my mitzvah. That seems to, the rest seems to say then that it's part and parcel of the mitzvah, and hence he says you have to go back. And the Rambam seems to hold it's an independent mitzvah. That's how, um, and because uh, that's how the briskarov seems to learn. Mm -hmm. Others seems to say that no, maybe um, every, even the Rambam agrees that if you eat the matzah without reclining, you have to go back. I so what about so what about the Rambam? Mm -hmm. His statement implying otherwise. So. So they explain how everyone agrees that there's that when that the matzah the the recording is, is part of the mitzvah matzah. The question is, in terms of 
Why do I have to go back? Everyone agrees you have to go back. The question is why? Then we'll see a nafkamina. In other words, when I eat my matzah without reclining, what's the problem? What am I lacking in? Am I lacking in the mitzvah of reclining? Or am I lacking in the mitzvah of matzah? In other words, why do I have to go back? Is because in order to give the matzah chashivas, I have to recline? Or no, in order to give him the reclining importance, I must do it, I can't just recline now, I have to be eating matzah. So that seems to be the machokas Ravam and the rush. Is, so the rush seems to say that you're lacking in the mitzvah of matzah, but the, and, the, and the Rambam would say you're lacking in the mitzvah of matzah, but my not I mean, if you, according to this approach, that you have to go back either way. So what's the nafkamina? Mm-hmm. So they bring down, let's say, um, let's say a case where the Gemara goes to, well, well, well one example is that they would you have, would you have to make a, so let's say you eat the matzah, you don't recline, so you have to eat another piece of matzah. Mm-hmm. So do I have to make another bracha on a new piece of matzah? So it depends. If I say I got my mitzvah of matzah, I'm lacking in the reclining, so I'm only going back for the reclining, my mitzvah of matzah I have, so then I would have to make another bracha. But if I'm going back because of the mitzvah of matzah, so then perhaps I'd have to make a new bracha. Or perhaps another nafkameen is the Gemara talks about different types of people if you're in front of, perhaps you don't have to recline. So for instance, the Gemara talks about gets into a Rebbe Muvach, a Rebbe, let's assume for our purposes, the luck is if you're eating the Seder at your Rebbe's home, so you don't recline because Kavan Harav, so you don't recline. So, so let's assume that's the halacha. It's a discussion in the Gemara. So it goes like this. Let's say a person ate matzah without reclining, so he has to eat some more matzah. And now what happens is his Rebbe comes in, whatever, he finishes his Seder, he's walking over to visit, and you're about to eat the matzah. So do I have to eat now a second piece of matzah? So if I'm lacking in the mitzvah of matzah, okay, so I still have to do my mitzvah of matzah. Mm-hmm. But if I'm lacking in the mitzvah of reclining, so then what's the point? I can't recline anyway, yeah. so therefore what am I gaining? Kind of like similar to the totally different concept, but a similar idea to the fact the machokas we discussed in the fourth parak in Brachas, if you forget Yalav Yavo mm-hmm. at Mincha, the last day of Rosh Chodesh, and now it's my rib, so Rosh Chodesh is over, so you don't repeat. So, well, that's, well, that's the question. Do you have to go back, um, if you forgot Yalav Yavo at Mincha, do you go back at my rib? So it was a machokas in the Rishonim, the Rabbeinu Yehuda and the rib. So we said, what's the issue at hand? The issue at hand is, do I get my mitzvah of tefillah? According to Rabbeinu Yehuda, the mitzvah of tefillah you got, you're only lacking in the chi of Haskara. So what, what's the gain? Mm-hmm. According to the riff, you, it's like you didn't get credit for davening, so you have to repeat. So similarly here, if, if, if you're lacking in the mitzvah of matzah, so then that's like the riff, you have to go back and eat another piece of matzah. Yeah. But if I'm lacking in the mitzvah of aseba, I can't do aseba anyway, so what's the gain? So, so that's different ways of warning. So it's a machokis, ramam, and rush. According to the Britska Rav explains, according to the ramam, you don't have to go back. According to the rush, you do. And in fact, that's what I think because it's based on the Gemara, which says that even a waiter who's eating his matzah has to recline. So, um, so the, even so, he, even a waiter who eats his matzah and doesn't recline doesn't get the mitzvah, something like that. So the question is, but which mitzvah? So the rush would say he doesn't get the mitzvah of matzah. The rabbi would say maybe the mitzvah of matzah you get, but not the mitzvah of aseba. So that's the way the Britska Rav says the machokas rabbim and tosis if you have to go back. Rush says yes, Rambam no, if that's the doubt of Tosis. And the others say no, everyone agrees you have to go back. The question is why you have to go back, the math can really be if I have to make another bracha. If, it's, if I'm lacking in the midst of matzah, I'd have to go back, if not I would. And if a Rebbe walks into my room, would I have to recline? So either way, you have a machokas, we shown him, everyone agrees matzah needs reclining. The only issue is whether if if you ate matzah without reclining, when you have to go back. So what about wine? So that's what we started to say in the Gemara. The Gemara says, Yayin, so matzah yes, mara no. Yeah. 
So in Mar Mishmei the Rav Nachman, it was stated in the name of Rav Nachman, Sarach Haseba. The in Mar Mishmei the Rav Nachman ain't Sarach Haseba. It was said in the name of Rav Nachman that you're not required. So which one is it? It's very clear. Rav Nachman, some, you know, it happens every time in Shear. Two people come out and say, the Rebbe said this, another one says, the Rebbe said the opposite. So what do you do? The low plea, the Gemara says, there's no machokas. Ha betarti kama. Kasi kamai habatarji kasi basrai. No, we so we know there are four cups. Mm-hmm. So you're right. On on two of the cups you have to recline. On two of the cups you don't have to recline. The only problem is we don't know which two cups. Amalahai gisa, amalahai gisa. And the Gemara they explain um, each way why um, different. The Gemara goes through why why someone says the first two yes because. That's when we're actually going free. The other one says, now that you're free, you do it. The Gemara goes through the reasons of both. So, the apple, so what do we do? It was said in Rav Nachman, you have to recline, but we don't know which cups. So what do we do? So the Gemara concludes, what should we do? Hashta de it mahachi, de it mahachi. Now that it was stated in each direction, what Rav Nachman holds. So what should we do? Id vi id by haseba. We take into account both views and we recline in all four cups. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, so, be, so we'll come back to that in a second. So what about if you drink the wine and don't recline? So you have to drink the wine and recline. So again, so it's like we had a machokas by matzah, mm-hmm. by wine as well. So, well, we make a compromise that the first two cups you go back the last two cups you don't go back. Why why, why is that compromise? Because since the luck is after the Afi Kalman we don't eat, so therefore the third and fourth cup it's in suffix, so therefore there's a you could be doing something wrong by drinking, so we tell you better not to shave out Hasta. But the first two cups you technically you're allowed to drink in between the meal in between the Abdullah. You the minute is not to you make all you do is you have the wine, you have your carapace and wine, but we don't drink, we don't eat and drink. But technically speaking, you're allowed to, so if you're not sure, there's no harm, go ahead and have another, another cup of wine. So that, so Lamaisa, what we do is, if you drink the wine without reclining, so the first two cups, we go back. Mm-hmm. The way, fundamentally, they're the same, it's just a pragmatic halachic issue. So the first two cups, we go back, the last two, we don't matzah. Once you try to remember, you know, or recline, and if you don't, then you probably should have another uh, kizayi or matzah. Mm-hmm. So, so interesting that the Tzir has a nice chat on what's this issue in the Gemara. The Gemara gives reasons for each opinion. Why one opinion says you recline on the first two cups, another opinion says you recline on the second two cups. Mm-hmm. So the Tzir has an interesting chat that uh, the pasuk in Bashala Vayatsev, from the word Haseb, Vayatsev, Olakim, but the Medrash Rabbah says the Jewish people reclined. When they left, what, where is this happening? It's in between, they already left Mitzrayim, but before Kriyas Yamsa. In between this time, it says the Jewish people, the Medrash says the Jewish people reclined. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons we reclined, is they start to remember what they did. So, that's a, that's a fact. So the, so the issue in the Gemara seems to be, should you re, we know we make Ga'al Yisrael at, by the second, agu, we make the Ga'al Yisrael by the second cup. So the question is that the Ga'ula, what's considered the Ga'ula? Was what's considered when the Jewish people were redeemed from Egypt. Is it the pshat? Once, once Paro said, let the people go, get out of here, Paro they left, that's considered the gula? Well, no. Ultimately, they were still in danger, Araya, that the Egyptians started chasing after. It wasn't until after Kriya Siam, so it's a discussion among the commentators, what is the Iker gula? Is it Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, mm-hmm. or is it Kriya Siam? So that's what the Mitzvah is. This is the issue in the Gemara. Everyone agrees to the facts. When did the Jews recline? In between the Tzias Messiah and Kriyas Yamsa. The opinion that says that you recline 
So, and everyone agrees, you know, you, you require the after the Gula. In other words, the question is, what was the Gula? Mm-hmm. So, the one who says the first, the one who says you recline um, the, the first two cups, because he says, you know, if you assume, if you assume, so if you assume you see at the time was the Gula, so they, they did their reclining afterwards, that would be the last two cups. If you assume the Ica Gula was Kriyas Yamsuf, and we know they reclined before, so that's the opinion of the first two cups. So, so a nice job. And then Siv, explaining the Gemara goes for technical reasons why, but then Siv seems to say, you know, that's the issue. So we could say, so what was, it's a machokit in the name of Rav Nachman, what we do. So the Gemara says, ID the ID by Haseba. We take into account both views and we recline in all four cups. The question is, the famous question of the Ran in the back of our Rav Sachim, what are you talking about? We have a principle that we've discussed many times in the Gemara, Suffolk the Raisa Chumra, a Tao regarding a biblical law was strict on, a Tao regarding a rabbinical law was lenient on. So, mm-hmm. drinking the Dalad cups, the four cups, is only rabbinical. Haseba, simple pshat, is only rabbinical. It's a doubt on a rabbinic law, so I should be able to pick two. What do you mean? Savik Dravan and Wakula, why am I reclining on all four? So so the Ran gives two answers. One answer before I get to the Ran, the Shilte Hagibora, one of the commentators in the back, he wants to say, Yeah, when do we say Savik Dravan and Wakula well, we have a kind of Eilu, the Eilu, Dibro, Kim, Chayim. If you have a Machokis between two different people, so then you assume, okay, they both could be right. Eilu, the Eilu, this is their opinion on how we fit it into the big picture. Mm-hmm. Then we get to Yisavik, Drabban, and Wakula. But here, it's two opinions in the name of Nachman. One of, he only said one of the two. So therefore, you don't apply Yisavik, Drabban, and Wakula here because it's not a matter of both being right. It's a matter of one, you know, it's hard to say that, you know, that one's right when they're both quoting in the same way. Mm-hmm. But that's the show they go on. But the Ron gives two answers. The first answer is very pragmatic. He just says, really, you're right. Really, you don't have to go back. Suffolk, Durabana, and Lukula. You don't have to, if you don't recline, you really don't have to recline in all four cups. Really, if you pick, you know, two out of the four cups, it's okay, because Suffolk, Durabana, and Lukula. However, there's a principle the Ron brings down on something that doesn't take a lot of effort. So it's true, even though strictly speaking it might be okay, but if it's no big deal, so you go, what's the harm? I'm going to take another 10 seconds, recline, and drink the wine. Something that doesn't take a lot of effort, we don't try to rely on stuff. Because some of the Ron is like a busy event. Yeah. So therefore, if it's not a big deal, you should try to do a Lechatkhila. The Mishnah Brura takes this Ron implies it to all things, not just limited to here, but in all mitzvahs, when you have, even when you could say technically you don't have to do something, but if it's not a big deal and you know you should be, so then you should rely on it. That's the first answer of the Ron. But he says, I like my second answer better. It's definitely better in Lumdis. Anyway, so he explains like this. He says, because what am I going to do? I can't say Safa to Rabban and Lukula here. Why? Because uh, four cups. So two and two. So it's what you, it's what you call a suffix hashakol. It's an even. I don't have any... The first two are any more compelling than the last two because we have reasons for both. I can't say... I can't arbitrarily pick two out of the four. I have to have a reason to pick two out of... If there's a more compelling reason for one, I can. So they're both equal. So I, can't, I don't have a right to pick one out over the other. So what am I going to do then? So, what, so what's going to happen? Then I'll get to the first two cups. I'll say Suffolk, Durabad, and Lakula. Then I'll get to the last two cups. Oh, Suffolk, Durabad, and Lakula. And I'll be Mabata, the Mitzvah, Vaseba, complete. We know it's, you don't say Suffolk, Durabad, and Lakula if it's going to lead to a wrong conclusion, what they call a Tarte de Sastre. Tarte means two. Sastre is contradiction. I'll give you an example where they use the term in, let's say, davening is a discussion on when the last time to daven mincha is, 
and one of the earliest signs to the Abba Meir is in the, in the Gemara in Brachas. Mm-hmm. So the so, so the Chacham's opinion is Yedavid Mincha before sunset, and then Meir preferably at the nightfall, but at least you have to wait till after sunset. And Rabbi Yehuda, he says you could have a mincha until Praga mincha, an hour and a quarter before, in a six to six day, so 4.45. And then you could have a Mairav after those. Two. So the Gemara says, when there's no conclusion in the Gemara, you just have to pick, you have to pick one, you have to be consistent. So it's a discussion, pick one at 13 and you stuff with that the rest of your life, or... At least that day. So that's a discussion how far it goes, but it's not out, it's not relevant now. Our point is so what if so what is so if someone davens mincha after Pragha mincha but before sunset, so he's following the opinion of who? He's following the opinion of the chachamim. It's too late. According to Rabbi Yudi, he can't dive a mincha, mm-hmm. and then he davens Mayrev during that same time period right after. He's following Mayrev of Rabbi Yehuda. Wait, when did he daven Mincha? Mincha, let's say, be, let's say daven, daven Mincha at 5 o'clock oh, wait, and daven Mayer at 5.15. Yeah. Both, no, not after, both after Pada Mincha before Shia. Shia yeah. So that's what they call a Tarte Disastre. You're taking the opinion of the Chachamim for Mincha, but you're taking the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda for Mayer. Mm-hmm. So that you can't do because it's a contradiction. In this t- it's the same time zone. Mincha is screaming out it's daytime. Myra is screaming out it's nighttime. That's a, that's a contradiction. So therefore, you can't do that. You know, then the, it gets into a question. Let's say that's when the, that's when the minions davening. It comes up on early Shabbos when we're changing the clock soon. So then it's a discussion. Is it better to daven with the minion? Because like, sometimes they just have a 7 o'clock early mincha that's it. So yeah, Sometimes it comes up, you dive in Mincha Mayrav during... So, so, then, so then you get into a further discussion whether this, whether this go with Tzvila B'Tzibor and dive in with the Tarte de Sastre or better um, to dive in Yechida. So that's a separate issue. But that's what, so here he's saying Tarte de Sastre is if I apply... The, I can't apply Safa Durabana and Lukula. But if I do that, when I come to the first two cups, I'm not going to recline. The last two cups, I'm not going to recline. So then I'll be Mavat to the midst of a stable of Gamre. So therefore it's definitely wrong, so I can't do something which is gonna have the wrong conclusion. So and, and that's the wrong that's why he says we can't say that's why the Gamar says I D V I D by Haseba because we do not apply Safak Drabad and Wakula here. Mm-hmm. In fact, the base Halevi has a similar one this. In fact, I think um, someone Chacham Echad or someone wrote to him about the mitzvah of Shvita. Today Shemitah is only Durabana. That's the way we passed in. That Shemitah, keeping the laws in Israel, it's only Durabana. So someone said to him, there's a machlokis among the Rama and Gaonim. Well, how do you count the years of Shemitah? In other words, do you go, like, like when is Yovel? Do you go 1 to 49 and Yovel is 50, you start counting 1 again? Or no, the 49th year is Yovel and Shemitah and you so it's a discussion on the count. So he says, it's really a machlokis, it's a suffix, when, which year is Yovah, which year is Shemitah, because maybe it's, it's a machlokis. And since Shemitah is Durabanan today, so we should say suffix Durabanan Lakula, and I have to keep Shemitah. I know that'll make a lot of people happy. So you don't, suffix Durabanan Lakula, you won't have to keep Shemitah. That's what he said, throw to the base of Levi. So the Beis Levi said, you obviously didn't learn the Ran and Arbe Yipsach. I don't know if he said that, but it's, it, that's what he's quoting. It's Ran and Arbe Yipsach, and that's the, so the Beis Levi says the same thing. You can't say Sadek Yorabad and Lakula, because what's going to happen? Every year, is this Shemitah, Sadek Yorabad and Lakula. Next year, you can go through seven years, Sadek Yorabad and Lakula, <laughs> you definitely missed the year. So you don't say Sadek Yorabad and Lakula in a case of uh, Tarte the Sasi. Kind of like the Ramam, I think, writes by Purim, by a town which is Suffolk Muchus Chama. We know that Lachi is, most cities read, observe Purim on the 14th, but walled cities, and Tam Yeshua Ben Nun, and Yushalayim, they do Purim on the 15th. 
So what happens if a town is a Suffolk walled city, a doubtful walled city from the time of Yeshua ben Nun? When should they keep? So the Rambam writes, you should keep both of them, 14th and 15th. You should read both on the 14th and 15th. I Suffolk to Rabban and Lakula. Mm-hmm. Okay, no. Because if you hear the Suffolk to Lakula, you won't read on the 14th and 15th. You're not hearing Megillah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's a fundamental um, yesod of the Ran that we don't say Suffolk to Rabban and Lakula if it leads to Makkam Tarate disaster. And that's the case of Shemitah, Megillah, and the many other examples. So let's summarize. So we're discussing the mitzvah of Aseba. So the Gemara said matzah requires reclining, mara does not require reclining, wine does, and we'll get into it, we'll come back to that summary in a sec, let's just summarize the matzah. So we had a machlokas, Ramam and the Rush, that let's say you don't recline. Everyone agrees you need to recline, let's say you don't. So Tosis is Masufic, the Rush seems to, according to the Briska Rav's interpretation, the Rush says you have to go back. And the Rambam says you don't have to go back. Others say, no, everyone agrees you have to go back. The question is, why do you have to go back? Do I have to go back because I'm lacking in the midst of matzah? Or I'm lacking in the midst of asay, but my nafkamin, if I have to go back, who cares? Nafkamin is, when I go back and eat the matzah, do I have to make a new bracha? If, I'm, if I didn't do my mitzvah of matzah, yes. If I didn't do my mitzvah of asay, but no, because we don't make a bracha on, on the mitzvah of asay, but and, and the other issue is you didn't recline, you're about to eat matzah and recline, and your Rebbe walks in, is there any point in eating the matzah? Mm-hmm. If you have to fulfill the mitzvah of matzah, yes. If you haven't fulfilled the mitzvah of matzah, but there's no point in doing it. Kind of like the machokis by Yalov Yavo, by Maya of Yavo. So that, so that's, so Allah Lamaisa, we were machmeret, it's a matzah, it's a mitzvah of the raisa, so one should try to remember to recline, because if you don't, then you should eat another you have to re- have another piece and recline. That's math. So what about wine? So we said wine needs reclining. It's, a, it's the two opinions and what Rav Nachman said, the first two cups to last two cups. So since we don't know, we recline on all four. So then it's about an interesting shot. What's the issue in the Gemara besides the technical reasons the Gemara gives? Everyone agrees they recline in between the Tzias Mitzrayim and Kriyas Yamsuf. The issue is, what was the Iker Geula? If you hold the Iker Geula, was it Tzias Mitzrayim, they reclined after they got redeemed, so that, then that's the opinion of reclining the last two cups. Mm-hmm. According to, according, if you hold Kriyas Yamsuf was the Iker at the Gemar Hatzola, so then they reclined before, that's the first two cups. And then we discussed the Ran, what's going on here, you recline on all four. What happened to the principal Suffolk, Draban, and Lakua? So according to the Shota Gibara, we only apply it when it's two different people. And we have Elo, Elo, Jibro, if you have two people saying it in the same name, one, one apparently has it wrong, so we don't say Suffolk, Draban, and Lakua. Well, the two answers are the Ran, the Ran says, really, you do say it. Really, you don't have to recline on all four. But the thing is that, since it's not a big deal, so therefore, on a Milsa, on something that doesn't take a lot of burden, we go ahead and we and we do recline. And the Mishnah word says that applies by any type of Suffolk Drabana, and even though technically speaking, if we didn't recline, it's okay, but we always try, if it's not a bit, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. And the fundamental second answer of the Ran is we don't have a reason to pick one over the other. So therefore, when it comes to the first two cups, I'll say Suffolk Drabana will cool, I won't recline. I'll come to the last two cups, I'll also say it. You nullify the bits of Aseba Ugamre, and therefore, that we don't say Suffolk Rabban and Lakula when it's going to lead you to the wrong conclusion, Atarate de Sase. It's like the Beit Levi said regarding the question of Shemitah. If you say Suffolk Rabban and Lakula, you'll never observe Shemitah, so obviously you can't um, come to that conclusion. And that's the Rambam by a city that's doubtful, walled city, Tamashu Abanun. Mm-hmm. You have to recline on both. We don't apply the principle of Suffolk Rabban and Lakula.